Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today on Catching Up with Turiano Johnson, who is joining us from Florida. So first off, let's talk a little bit about how that boxing lifestyle of yours has changed. Obviously, we know that a lot of the boxers are still staying active. You guys are still working out during this pandemic. How has your day-to-day -day changed and how are you keeping fit? I do this on a daily basis and a regular basis. You know, staying fit as far as keeping your mind active and sharp. You know, I play a lot of games, play chess, I play checkers, play dominoes. And, uh, you know, spending a lot of time with my family, you know, especially my daughter, Tatiana Johnson, and my wife, Natanya. You know, we, we are very close family, along with my mom and my dad, Irvin and Ikena Johnson. It's, uh, that helped me with my emotions, you know, uh, missing the ring so much. And then, you know, we have our beaches back home in the Bahamas. I love going to go in the waters. I love to fish. That's my passion there also. I love to fish, uh, you know, and, and I love to swim. So that has also helped me out, you know, dealing with my emotions of missing the ring. But, uh, you know, we go to the gym on a regular basis. I, I do a little bit of training. I, in fact, I'm a bit of a a coach myself when it comes to nutrition and training. So it has helped me to stay focused on the path of being in shape. And uh, I do have my time to myself when I can go into that gym and just have some fun on the boxing bag and just wail out and let it all loose just for my own personal training. So, you know, it, it has been tough during this pandemic. You know, uh, back home in the Bahamas, we have curfews, you know, where we have to be inside at a certain time. I thank God that my government allowed me, you know, the very few, the government allowed to uh, go out at night and to be able to use our national facilities, which even then was a bit of a hindrance dealing with some of the hiccups and the red tapes dealing with that. But uh, I was able to go out, unlike most families could do, and, and train. So uh, my country has really been, you know, supportive of, of me and I've been, I've been able to benefit from such support of our government in the Bahamas. So when you say your country has your back when it comes to boxing, I mean, it sounds like 100% they're even, you know, allowing you to train in the after hours. Well, yes, you know, uh, we are living in a day and age now, you know, in a time, in a time, you know, during these crises, you know, you're, you're not permitted to do much. But uh, my country saw it fit and needing that, you know, Toriano is a representative of the Bahamas. And uh, I do my best. I wave that flag high to the sky, representing the 242 Nassau Bahamas and all of the other islands, Long Island and Nassau, Bimini and all of the islands of the Bahamas. I represent that with my heart and my soul. I'm a Bahamian at, at soul, but hey, my country has noticed that and they have given me you know, full support. They're behind me 100, 100, and 100%. Here's one of the things that I gotta say is, Turiano, I know that you've been watching our interviews because I see you commenting under some of those posts, especially I saw your comment to Jason Quigley when he called out Jaime Munguia and you told him, you know what, Jason, I've got my eyes set on him first. Tell me about that comment. Why is it that you feel that you should get that shot at Jaime Munguia first? Well, you know, uh, this boxing comes in levels, you know, there's levels to this. And uh, no doubt, you know what, I, I can't see anybody thinking otherwise for Toriano above a chasing, uh, Jason quickly to get the opportunity to fight. Uh, for him to make that statement, you know, that's a pretty ballsy one of him. But indeed, you know, he is a fighter, you know, and uh, besides, his, besides his ego, you know, Jason is one who has heart. So he believes he can go in there and fight any and everybody. I got to give him that credit. But Tariano is the one who really put you down. And uh, I think you really should take a step back when it comes to picking the big fights. And so why Jaime Munguia for you? Well, it's not just uh, individually Munguia. You know, it's it pretty much any of the big boys out there. You know, I'm in the top 10. I've been in the top 10 for quite a while. You know, uh, in fact, in, in recent times, I've been even closer to the number one market. I believe I deserve that opportunity. I believe I've gotten a, an unfair shake at many times, but you know, that's just the way boxing is at times. You know, I'm not looking at how fair it is, but Mongia, when you mention Mongia, man, the kid, he came, uh, he was the junior middleweight champion. 
he did an extraordinary job disposing of the uh, champion at that time. And uh, he moved up to middleweight into my territory where I'm at and claimed to be one of the best fighters there. Well, fight the best fighters. Uh, you cannot think about going to the very top without going to levels. And I can't say that Toriano is the world champion right now. I'm a world champion in my own right, no doubt. But definitely, uh, I believe Mangi had to go to Toriano, not a Spike Sullivan, you know, who I believe, you know, shouldn't have even been in the ring with, uh, with Mangi. Another name that has come up with your name as well in recent days actually has been Canelo Alvarez. Is that a name that you're interested in taking and do you feel ready for that level? Well, you know, a lot of fighters, them, you know, they're, they're looking for that big payday. They're, they're looking for that opportunity to say, you know what, I'm going to get that big payday. Every day. As for me, you know what, I'm a prize fighter and I fight for money, but at the same time, I wish to leave a legacy. And once you make your legacy first, the money will follow. Um, Toriano wants to fight Canelo. I believe I'm the best option and the best choice for Canelo. I believe that beside the Callum Smith, a Jason Quigley, a John Ryder, I, I don't believe in any sense of the word a champion, any one of those guys can stand with Canelo. I believe they're all going in there for that paper, for that money, but they're not going to give it an extraordinary show. You put Toriano inside that ring. I will fight my heart out because that's what I do best. I'm a passionate man as a fighter, but I'm an even greater fan in boxing. And I'm gonna tell you, you Noel, know, you've seen me fight, but when I bring it, I bring it all. And I'm gonna leave it all inside that ring. You give me Canelo, you give me that opportunity to step into the ring with Canelo Alvarez. Hey, you're, you're gonna get a non-stop, all action, explosive fight. You give any of the other fighters, hey, to be honest, I've seen in recent times, a lot of them just laid down. Toriano ain't laying down, I'm coming to fight. You know, you say you're a passionate man about the sport and just hearing you talk about a possible fight with Canelo Alvarez, I do hear that passion. How hard has it been since this pandemic started to keep that passion alive for this sport? First of all, I'm a Bahamian and you know, we've only had one world champion. You know, uh, and that was Elijah Obed, who was the world champion almost 40 years ago. And uh, I have the weight of my country on my back. I have my wife and my daughter who I have to provide for. I have my family who looks up to me. You know, and, and I got myself, myself. I cannot live a day in life not knowing that I had the opportunity and I missed it to be a world champion. My focus right now is to be a world champion. Put that belt around my waist. Put all of those belts around my waist. I, it, it, it a bit irate for me to listen to fans them say, oh, a John Ryder deserved the shot. A Callum Smith deserved the shot. Even a, a Jamal Chalo deserved, deserved the shot. To me, all of those guys are paper champions. You put me in the ring with any one of them and I will dispose of them to the easiest. But uh, I believe I deserve that opportunity to fight Canelo. And if I don't get that opportunity, anybody who challenged Canelo, I'm going after them. And that's my whole aim and objective. Ain't nobody going to hold me back. Ain't nothing going to hold me back anymore. I'm going after everybody out there. Yeah, Toriano, does it get frustrating for you when you hear other names coming up from fans and not your name? Like, why do you think it is that you maybe get overlooked? Uh, you know, Again, like I said, I may be a boxer, but at heart, I'm a boxing fan and I analyze boxing. I study boxing. I live boxing. This is my passion of my life. And when folks them overlook Toriano, I could understand why. I could understand why. I'm not making excuse on any level here, but the truth be told, you're coming from a small country, the Bahamas. You know, it's not really heard of other than tourism. I, I get it. Folks, them, they don't even know where the Bahamas is. They don't even think that it exists. So in that sense, I believe it's overlooked. You know, and I've been having some cases on my, you know, causing it on myself at times, you know, so to say. You know, injuries has, has brought upon, you know, a lot of delays, you know, uh, managerial issues, promotional issues has brought, brought upon delays. But, uh, all of that is behind me now and as a boxing fan 
as you watch and you critique this, you can tell that Toriano is better than a Jamal Chalo. I'm better than a Rocky Fielding, better than a Callum Smith, better than a John Ryder, better than every other middleweight and super middleweight out there. Opportunity has not really presented itself to me. If that phone were to ring right now and you were to be offered a fight, what name would you hope was in that fight for you? <laughs> if this phone rings right now and I get a call, I'm hoping that call would be Canelo Alvarez and Toriano, get ready. September 12th, me and you are going to collide in Las Vegas. And uh, I would say <laughs> September 12th can't come any sooner. <laughs>